Ivan Honda, Shumai, what's happening, everybody, and all that. I just recorded this video um, a minute ago, but um, I've got an isolation haircut, and, and I just, I can't handle. Here I am again, right? Shumai, what's happening, Ivan Honda? I'm here today to talk to you about the S4C series, bang. Series one aired on S4C back, I think, in 2017. And series two just finished. And you can catch both series on the S4C player click, or you can catch it on iPlayer. Now, the story I've got with this is, my excuse, I don't tend to watch a whole lot of television, which is something I mean to be correcting all the time, particularly from the Welsh angle. What was happening, I was watching this back in 2017. My laptop broke. I'm a bit of an idiot. I didn't have any insurance. I stopped making videos on this channel. Thank heavens for that, I hear you say. And um, I didn't return to the series until the isolation period of it last week when I binge watched series one again and the whole of series two in a day and a half. And it was well worth it. I'm not going to go over the plot with you. Don't really see the point in that. The series one ran with a tagline. It's the story of a brother, a sister, and a gun. Wonderful simplicity. Written and created by Roger Williams. Bang does something that um, I'd wanted to see whilst drama do for a very long time. First off, um, it's genuinely bilingual. Now, as a lover, as a defender, as a champion, I like to think of the Welsh language, Bilingual drama just gives me, and I suspect other monoglots, just a bit more of a grounding of a connection with what's going on. Now, that may seem a bit pathetic. For me, it's important. Also, bilingualism reflects the reality, maybe not of poor Talbot, but reflects the reality of Welsh-speaking Wales, which is, of course, a misnomer, because Welsh-speaking Wales is bilingual Wales, just as um, Welsh medium education is actually bilingual education. Also, I feel that this bilingualism can't help but bring a younger, a newer, and whisper it, maybe a more British audience into the series. Nothing of Findema. Tabot? No. Maybe Captain. Luke. You might do that. Pam with the ruin is Sinead now. All right. Pam with the ruin and Croggy Dean are hung in a golf room host box. There we go. Secondly, Bang is urban. Now, no offence to anyone, but I'm very tired of dreary, depressing Welsh dramas placing themselves on rain-sodden farms with yokel depressives. You know, uh, Dylan's just shagged his sister and Caris has just buried her baby Megan out the back garden. We don't need any more of this. What Bang does is it puts itself in a real place, Port Talbot, which is absolutely essential, but also it gives it a wonderful cinematic and atmospheric look. Port Talbot, uh, incidentally, bore some of Wales' most famous actors. Now, what else do you get with that urbanity? Well, you get drugs and you get violence and you get illicit sex. And the third thing about Bang that I love is it, it, it's fucking dirty, man. <laughs> What do I mean by dirty? Well, okay, but I remember when I watched the first episode of the new series of Battlestar Galactica um, back in 2004, I think it was, and within a few minutes, Chief Tyrrell was banging Boomer up against the wall in the cargo bay. Now, this was an illicit affair they weren't supposed to be having, and I remember thinking straight away, or somewhere inside me, thinking, wow, this show is not going to be like Star Trek, is it? And there's a similar break from convention in episode one of the first series of Bang. This kind of reminds me of something that Twin Town did and that its director, Kevin Allen, always used to say about the Welsh dramatic establishment is that they were scared of and annoyed by Twin Town because it subverted that cosy, Celtic, tourist board image of Wales. With, of course, drugs, bent coppers, which is kind of realistic because we all know a lot of coppers are cunts, and illicit sex, or if you prefer, banging. Quick story 
for you. Uh, when I first started my research into what would eventually become this channel in 2011, I was preparing my dissertation. And the first thing I read was a book called Whales on Screen, edited by Steve Blanford. Now, this book contains an essay by a certain Mr. Philip John. Philip is a writer, producer, and a TV director who has made episodes of, among many others, uh, Downton Abbey, Outlander, and even Marvel's Iron Fist. Not a bad CV for a Welshman, eh? He also directed 12 of Bang's 14 episodes. Back in 1997, Philip wrote an essay called a Diary of a Welsh Screenplay, and it was about the problems facing English language screenwriters working within the Welsh system. And here's what Phil had to say back then that I paraphrased for my dissertation. Welshness is an elastic and complex concept. Apart from a few short, isolated periods, our country has never been a united one. Wales is fragmented historically, geographically, linguistically. Now, personally, I see these fault lines as a source of vitality, strength, and inspiration. Cheers, microphone. Now, reading that about eight years later in 2020, I can't help but feel, Phil, that bang is something that you have wanted to make for a very long time. I can't help but feel this is kind of like a homecoming for you as a writer and a creator. So, Phil, if you're watching, and I hope you are, I want you. I want you here on Wales in the Movies. Come here. Let's do a podcast. Uh, I want to hear about your career your early life, your influences, uh, your whales, and I want to hear about your bang. So back to the show. Series one in particular gets a great central performance out of Jacob Ivan as the young troubled Sam. Um, so bang also embraces something which Fleer David's series 35 Hour that was on last year on S4C did very well also, which is that it's not afraid to make unrealistic, far-fetched, yet dramatic things happen in their Welsh fiction. Folks, nobody cares about other TV shows being far-fetched. Why should we care about Welsh ones, right? So dramatic fiction is not supposed to be exactly like real life. It's supposed to be heightened realities. We can comment on themes and ideas. Dramatic fiction deals with truth, not facts. And it's very important to distinguish them two. Series one is essentially the story of a, a weak man who's dangerously empowered by the possession of a gun. Despite developing in quite a complex way, the series ends in a way which is also totally satisfying. Now, series two takes a wee bit of a departure from that format. I couldn't see before watching it how Roger Williams would get over that um, same shit, same guy, twice problem. But he does so in a way which takes the focus off the characters and puts it more onto the plot. Now, some of you may not like that. I kind of missed the, the grounding, the anchoring in the, in the central character, Sam, but I still found it absolutely gripping and especially complemented by a subtle and menacing performance from Devan Duivor who's brilliant in everything he's been in so far, and some proper sick shit in the last couple of episodes. I mean, Roger Williams, you sick bastard. In the last episode, I was fucking gagging all over the place, man. We're entering a bit of maybe of a golden era in terms of Welsh language, drama, and fiction. Whichever language you prefer to view it, there's plenty still I've got to catch up on. I haven't finished all of Hinterlands yet, and I'm considering Torchwood. You tell me. I really believe that Wales needs more genre dramas. But as somebody who can't really stand Doctor Who, tell me, viewers, how am I going to get on with Torchwood? Either way, whatever you prefer, if you're a fan of Welsh drama and particularly cop genre dramas, bang is going to be right up your street. Bend a bloody getting.